I'll lower that so I can see you. Ms. Parton, you've been present for trial yes. and you've heard all the testimony. Yes. I want to start with just some real basic questions. Um, you indicated that you started babysitting Hannah back in 2017. Was that June, June, approximately June 19th? Does that sound about right? I think so. All right. And at that time, she would have been approximately two and a half years old? Is yes. that fair? Yes. Okay. And we've already established that you were watching your two kids, Vivian and Savannah. How old would they have been at that time? Their birthdays are September and October. So two and a half, a little bit over two and a half, and three. And you were also watching another little girl, Kaylin or KK? Yes. All right. And how old was she at that time? Same age as Vivian. They're only a week apart. And Vivian is the younger or the older child? The older, so three, three and a half. Almost. almost. And you had Kaylin three days a week? Yes, Monday, Monday. through Wednesday. And yes. sometimes on Thursdays if Dad couldn't pick her up or had to work? Yes, sometimes he worked overtime on Thursdays. So I would watch her. And prior to watching Hannah in June, how long have you had KK at that point? It was August of 2016. And TJ, TJ Smith, he kind of sprung it on you that you'd be watching Hannah. Is that right? Yeah, he asked me on a Sunday night. And he said he had hired a new mechanic and he needed you to watch his kid. He asked me if I would. Okay, but, but that was kind of how it came about. That was the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And initially you thought that was just going to be a temporary situation. I don't know if I necessarily thought it was going to be temporary, but that was my assumption. And before Hannah was added in the mix in June of 2017, Kaylin was dropped off. Your previous testimony, I think, in your um, interview was that she was dropped off about 8 a.m. Does that sound right? 7.50, yeah. And so now when watching Hannah, you'd have to get up an hour earlier. I was usually up anyway. But, but that was kind of the expectation. She's yeah. coming an hour earlier. You've got to be up for that. Yes. And sometimes it, it was... It was even earlier than that, is that right? Yes. Sometimes as early as 6.10? Yes. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, and you had her four days a week. Yes. Monday through Thursday. And when Jason moved in, um, he was already working for Smith Corps, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you weren't really thrilled about the prospect of Jason moving in, is that right? No, I thought it was fine. You weren't afraid that he was going to dump his kids on you? No, I enjoyed all three of them. Nothing. And Jason would always come over and drop off Hannah at your house. Is that correct? Yes. And it was only when it was cold that he met you in the garage? No, Is I that think right? that was our normal routine. Okay. Regardless. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? You may. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the state would request permission to publish State's Exhibit 157, which is already uh, the admitted phone download of Ms. Parton. Um, just double check here. But is this one of the numbers that has already actually been? Admitted? No, this is a new number. Okay. But this is taken as an excerpt from an exhibit that has been. Admitted. That's correct. Ms. Uh, Howard? Nothing other than in addition to what we just discussed. It will be admitted, then you may publish when you wish. And Your Honor, I request that the thank you, Ms. Parton. I want to direct your attention to an outgoing message that you would have sent on what appears to be July seventeenth of two thousand seventeen at one o three p.m. Can you please read that statement for the jury? Sure. <clears throat> Starting with so Roger. So Roger texted Jason last night asking him if he wanted the house next door. First off, not his house to give out to rent, and second, I'm concerned about Jason and the kids moving in there. I just have a feeling he's going to put his kids on me all the time, and that will be 
here all the time and I can't handle that I need space from work stuff. And I'm worried about the pond with kids. Like they can't be down there by themselves or whenever they feel like it. I feel stressed out so bad. It's always something I can't control and I hate it. Ms. Howard, are states your exhibits up here? All the ones that were admitted, yes. Do you have CC? It should be in that stack. Thank you. I put all the blue right there in that stack. Awesome. Thank you. Ma'am, I want to direct your attention to Defendant's Exhibit CC. Permission to approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. Do you recognize what that exhibit was? <coughs> yes. Okay. So you went over that with Ms. Howard on, on direct, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you indicated, you're on a permission to publish. You may. You indicated at that time that these are the notes that you would have kept for the times that the children that you were watching were there. Is that right? Yes. All right, and this first page, this would have been regarding KK? Yes. And then the second page is regarding Hannah, is that right? Yes. And it appears that this entry was created on January 22nd of 2018. Mm -hmm. Does that seem right? Yes. All right. And it says that the title is called O's? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So these would have been the amount of money, just to orient myself to this document. There's a column. The first column shows numbers. Or is that what you would have been owed or what he should have paid you? Right. And yes. he being Jason. Yes, ma'am. All right, and then this shows what it's for. So the days either that he watched you or it says here it says costume. Yes. So that would have been if you had bought a costume and he owed you money for that. All right, so looking at this document, what typically was a full day that you would charge 30 for and what's a full day that you would charge 35 for? Um, 12 hours, 35, um, or if it was dinner. Um, 30 if it was underneath that okay and then if he got off early in the middle of the day say it started raining or a similar example then 25 it was, it was like a half day then right all right so it also seems that you put down the days that Hannah would be dropped off and the times is that right yes so looking at this document it appears let's see so starting with January 24th. It indicates that was a full day. And what were the and then what the hours would have been? What are those hours? Seven to six. And so you would have charged about thirty-five. Yes. And you were pretty fair with your charging, is that right? I tried to be. Yes. Right. You weren't trying to undercharge or overcharge. Absolutely not. And mm -hmm. on January the next day, January twenty-fifth, what are the hours there? Seven to seven. All right. And what about January twenty-ninth? Um, 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. All right, so that would have been a little bit of an earlier day, but then he got home a little bit earlier. Is right. that fair? Correct. Um, and then if we move down to January 30th, and what's that? What are the hours there? 6.15 to 7.30. And what about January 31st? 7.15 to 6. All right, and then February 1st? 6.45. I probably just didn't remember what time he got there. But you knew it was a full day, so you wrote down full day. And then what about if we skip ahead, it looks like February 5th. What are the hours there? 6.30 to 4.30. Right. And what about February 6th? 6.45 to 6.30. And then it looks like if we skip down to February 12th, what are the hours on that? Um, 6.45 to 5.30. And then it looks like February 13th and 14th, 6.30 start time. Yes. And on February 20th, he gets a little, or I'm sorry, February 15th gets a little bit earlier, 620 drop off, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And then we skip down ahead a little bit towards the bottom. It looks like after dance, February 20th, what are the hours there? Sorry. Um, 645 to 730. And then February 26th and 27th, <coughs> 630 start time, is that right? Yes. And it looks like that notation then ends. It says no show Thursday, March 1st. It was a rain day. Yes, ma'am. And what you also kept track of on this is what Jason would owe you as far as payment. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So when he would owe you something, this paper keeps moving. I apologize. 
when he would owe you something, you would write, you would jot that down as well. Yes, ma'am. And so it looks like if we go through that document, you would indicate when he paid. So right here it says paid 140. Sorry, I'm trying to find that here. But then owes 320. So you would mark when he paid. Is that right? And then the balance. And then the balance and what he owes. So as of February 1st, it looks like he owed you 425. And then it says owes 225. So that would have been the balance because yes, he had paid you. All right. And then looks like as of February 12th, he owed you 190. As of February 15th, 330. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You have no reason to doubt that these numbers are correct. No. Okay. And it says there in the final, owes 260 as of February 28th. And that's kind of where you left it. It hasn't yes, been updated since then. And I don't know that you necessarily had a watch on when you were recording these times, but you recorded them pretty close, at least to the 15 minute mark. So if it was 635, you'd say 630. Yeah. Okay. And if, so you were close enough. I tried fair to be fair to say. Because Hannah would get dropped off so early, you would prepare and feed her breakfast. Is that fair? I fed them all breakfast. Fed them all. So KK was already there and you would feed them all breakfast? Yes, ma'am. And you would prepare and feed her lunch? Yes, ma'am. And I think that you said in one of your interviews that you would sometimes wash her clothes if they were dirty. Every once in a while. Okay. More Throw them in with the rest of the kids' main, clothes? Mainly like her jacket and her blanket. Okay. Because those got used a lot? Yeah. Sometimes you had a bather. Every once in a while. And I think you said in one of your interviews that she was kind of finicky about her hair. Is that she right? She was. All right. And you said, I, I think you said that you, she tried, you would try to fix it, maybe put it in a ponytail, and she just, she was not having any of it. Any of it. My right. youngest one's the same way. All right. She just wanted to, and we've seen pictures, Pull it out. but it seems like she has bangs and maybe some long hair, and that it was just kind of a shaggy, and that was it, right? That was it. And I think that you've stated before that if dad was really late picking her up, you would, you would feed her dinner too. Absolutely. All right. So I think you said one time you fed her a, a Skyline Chili Bake. Yes, ma'am. Early on when you started watching Hannah, were the hours a little bit more consistent, seven to five? Not necessarily. Um, he had gotten a new car. He, was, he would work on that after work and make sure that I was okay with that, which I was. Um, he sometimes would run errands and ask me if that was okay. okay. There were times he was in the process of, I think, trying to get a divorce, so he would go run those kinds of errands. And, was, and you would just hold on to Hannah at that point? Yes. As time went on, it, it seemed like you were watching her a little bit more closer to that 12 hours. Isn't that right? It depended on what day it was. Yeah. But I it mean, wasn't unusual for it to be a 12-hour day? No, ma'am. And ma'am, I think... I think you've testified today too, and I, I know it's a taboo question to ask about height and weight, but I think today that you testified that you're 4'11". Yes, ma'am. I think I, you have a driver's license, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. On that driver's license, it says that you're five foot. Makes myself feel better. Right. And would you agree with me that statements that you made at the time of your interview a year ago, I mean, it's been 13 months, so yes. we're probably fresher in your mind at that moment. Yes. And in your interview, that first interview, you said you weighed about 115 pounds. Does that sound right? Yeah. I fluctuate. Here I understand. <laughs> Ma'am, in that, we've heard some testimony on direct that Sergeant Whitlock was present in, do you know who I'm referring to when I say Sergeant Whitlock? Yes, okay. ma'am. He was present for your first interview. Yes. And he kind of came in and out. Yes. And I mean, he's kind of a big guy. He is. Yeah, and he's... he's kind of intimidating, right? Yeah. And he's got a bald head and a booming voice. I mean, is that a fair characterization? Fair. And you heard, um, not only on direct, but I mean, you watched your interview and you know that he came in and he told you during that first interview on, on March 8th that Hannah had died. He did. Right, and you were aware of that. And at some point you became aware that she was not, she was, she was still living, is yes. that right? <clears throat> The testimony that you heard was that Sergeant Whitlock told you that she was still alive, but that's not your testimony today. No, ma'am. Who told you that she was still alive? Um, TJ, as okay. we were walking out. He said, she's still alive. Well, I said, let's go to the hospital. Okay. And I said, why? And we had that conversation. 
when you had that interaction with Sergeant Whitlock and he asked you to take a guess when you called 911 and he said would it surprise you to know that it was an hour and 20 minutes after and I think your testimony today was it took me a second and I realized wait no that's not right and you and you told him that right yeah. you said there's yes. no way that that's right and you told him that yes and because you knew that you had not been with Hannah for an hour and 20 minutes at that point. Yes, ma'am. And so you, you stopped him right in his tracks and you said, no, can I see my phone? I know that's not right. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And after that first interview, you were also interviewed the next day. Is that right? Yes. So you were interviewed twice. Yes. And I am going to look for an exhibit. Judge, I only asked the witness to be found out of trouble. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, permission to approach Ms. Wilson. I think she has an exhibit I'm looking for. Okay, Ms. Wilson, do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> Witness. Ma'am, I'm going to hand you what's been previously marked as States Exhibit 92 and 94. Go ahead and take a look at those. <clears throat> what I've handed you are your Miranda warnings from March 8th and March 9th. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And those warnings, those were given to you at the Sheriff's Office both days. Is that right? Yes. And I think the first one was Detective Sprague and Detective Lambert. Do you see one of those signatures or names appearing on that? It looks like Lambert. It's like an L. And you would have actually received that card, is that right? At some point during to that keep interview? Or just Not to, to keep, but okay. to sign. Yes, just, just All to right. sign. And your name, I don't know if it's a signature, but your name appears on that document? Yeah, I printed it in. You printed it in. And with both states exhibits 92 and 94, so the Miranda warnings that were given to you on March 8th and March 9th, your name appears on both of those documents? Yes. All right. And that would have been your handwriting. Is that right? In the second interview that you were with uh, Detective Turner here and Detective Hensley, they went over those warnings again with you. Yes. Is that right? Okay. And they read them out loud and you had the opportunity to, you can read. Is that right? Yes. So they read them out loud and you had the opportunity to read along. Yes. Is that fair? Permission to approach and retrieve the exhibits? You may. <clears throat> Ma'am, you indicated today uh, that the injuries to Hannah's chin and the injuries to her chest, you believe are from a fall from the, on the gravel driveway. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you were present all throughout trial? Yes. You heard Dr. Makarov testify? I did. And you heard her testify that the locations of those bruises aren't consistent with a fall. You heard that testimony? I did. And you heard her testify that the areas that are bruised, specifically the chest. These are protected areas of the body. Do you remember that testimony? I do. When Hannah fell on the gravel driveway on, you said it was Tuesday, right? Yes, ma'am. When she fell on that gravel driveway, did she scrape up her knees? I didn't check. Did she scrape up her hands? Not that I, I, I didn't. Did she hit her forehead? I don't know. When she fell, did her hands go out to catch her? I don't know, it was a year and a month ago. So when you were previously interviewed and you said that she walked and she just pushed her hands back and fell flat on her chest, that's not your testimony today that you don't remember that? I, if that's what I said in my interview, then that's the truth that was closer to the time. So it's your understanding that, that Hannah had no survival instincts to put her hands out to catch herself? Check the characterization. I'll withdraw the question. All right. You, you indicated that you went out twice that day for a walk because it was nice. It was nice, yes. And you said the first time that you went out is when the fall happened. Yes, ma'am. Right. You also indicated that I think she was wearing, I think your words were a crew neck shirt from Walmart. I think that was what you Just described a it as. Shirt. Okay. And she had her jacket on. Yes. Right. 
And so your testimony today is that she fell wearing a shirt, wearing a jacket on a gravel driveway, and it and those gravel rocks pierced through her chest with all those layers of clothes? It could have. It was a light jacket. It was one of my kids' jackets. And you also said that she fell from, it's your testimony today, that she fell off that train on Wednesday. Yes. And I think your testimony today was that she was getting ready to jump off it or she was jumping off it and getting back on or about to jump off. Is that your testimony today? That was, yeah. Right. And you previously told Detective Turner in your interview on 3-9 that she was standing on that train and she was surfing. I think you yeah. actually identified that she was surfing. Yeah. So not jumping, surfing. Is that right? It's kind of the same motion and then jumping off. Okay. You also described today that that conversation with Detective Lambert regarding the ketchup, that never happened. It did not. Absolutely did not happen. Absolutely not. Did not tell Detective Sprague. No. Did not tell Detective Lambert. No, ma'am. The first time, according to your testimony today, that you talked about ketchup in the toilet would have been your interview with Detective Turner. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And I think you've used the word mischievous multiple times to describe Hannah. Is that correct? Yes. And I think in your interview on 3-8 with Detective Lambert, you said, you used that word. You said, Hannah's mischievous. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And at one point in your interview with Detective Whitlock was in the room at that time, um, you were asked, Ms. Parton, I want you to guess what happened to that child. And your response was, I'm sure she did something bad and got in trouble. She's a little mischievous. Do you remember saying that? Yes. And you weren't lying about that, right? All the four, all four girls are mischievous, but yes. Ma'am, we've had some testimony that prior to this, you had a cell phone, States Exhibit 124. Yes. And you would use that cell phone to text Jason. Yes. And you would use that and you, in fact, used that phone to call Jason on 3-8 of 2018 when Hannah collapsed. Yes, ma'am. In fact, you used that phone to call 911, is that right? Yes. You had that phone that whole week? Yes. Right? It was an Apple iPhone? Yes. And it was taken in evidence on 3-9 of 18, correct? Yes. After your interview or during your interview with the detectives? Yes. And I know we've talked about this. You've used Google before. I don't know that there's a single person that hasn't, but you've used Google before, is that right? Yes. And you actually think had the Google app on your phone. I did. And um, we talked about this on, on March 7th. You Googled information about bruises. Yes, ma'am. And, in fact, you were really forthcoming about that. You told detectives in your interview on 3-8, you said, yeah, I Googled bruising. Yes, ma'am. And, in fact, you were very forthcoming on your, your second interview and you said, yeah, I, I Googled bruises in that interview, too, right? Is that right? In your first interview, and I apologize, I'm looking for the paperwork that I want. It's getting a little congested up here. In your first interview, you told detectives that you Googled how to make a bruise look better. Is that right? Yes. And in your second interview, you told detectives that you Googled how to make a bruise feel better. Is that right? Yes. But isn't it true that in actuality, and according to State's Exhibit, I'm sorry, Defendant's Exhibit, DZ, permission to publish? Mm -hmm. You didn't Google how to make a bruise look better, how to make a bruise feel better. You Googled how to get rid of a bruise. Is that right? Yes. And you would have Googled that the day that Hannah fell off the train, March 7th? The morning of. Okay. When Dad came to pick her up, do you remember telling Dad that she fell off the train at 4 p.m.? Yes. Okay. And do you remember telling Detective Mayer when he responded to the house on 3 that she had fallen off the train at 4 p.m. the day before? Yes. Ms. Parton, can you please look at how to get rid of a bruise on 3-7? Can you tell me the timestamp? 8 a.m., 48 minutes, and 17 seconds. All right. And is 8 a.m. before or after 4 p.m., ma'am? It's before. 
So when you said that you Googled it after she fell off the train, that wouldn't have been correct? Um, I'm not sure. And ma'am, you indicated during your first interview, you knew that, that the police were going to look at your phone at that point, didn't you? Yes. And I think you made a comment when you were sitting by yourself, like, they're going to look at my phone. Is that right? I don't remember that. I'm not sure. Permission to publish Defendant's Exhibit DD again. Amen. And ma'am, we've gone through some other information that you deleted throughout this time. You didn't delete Celebrex, right? No. You didn't delete Is Vapor Rub Good for Bruises? No, ma'am. You didn't delete what essential oils is good for bruises. No, ma'am. The only one that's showing here that you deleted is how to get rid of a bruise. Is that fair? Yes. You heard some testimony yesterday from Paula Smith. I did. And you also, I think you started your testimony today talking about that you're not technically married to TJ, right? You had a ceremony. You had a wedding. Were people there? Yes. All right, family showed up. Did you wear a white dress? I did. And I think your testimony today is that marriage, the marriage license is just a piece of paper. To me. But ma'am, you didn't actually tell your family that you weren't married until about a year later, is that right? No, they all knew. They all knew, okay. So when Paula testified that she didn't find out until a year later, that was a lie? Yes. Okay. And ma'am, isn't it true that you didn't get married uh, to TJ, you didn't do a marriage license so you could continue to collect government benefits? Mm -hmm. No. Check this Come on. Approach. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you disregard, well, I'm not asking, I'm going to report you to disregard the very last question and answer that you heard. Could have been rephrased uh, a little differently, and I think it's going to be rephrased, so please disregard that last question. Initiate and continue. Thank you, ma'am. Isn't it true that you told Paula Smith that the reason that you didn't have a marriage license is so that you could collect government benefits? No. You were you are pretty good friends with Ms. Smith, is that right? Yes. You guys exchanged, I think in that, in that box alone, thousands of text messages, is that fair? Yes. You would commiserate about things going on in your life, is that fair? Yes. And on 3-8-2018, Paula Smith came over to watch your kids so you could go to the hospital? Yes, ma'am. And that's when you went to Fort Hamilton Hospital, that first time? Yes. And she stayed at your house, is that right? Yeah, I think she took the girls to her house as well. And I'm you, sure. I think the testimony today was that you were approximately at Fort Hamilton for about 30 minutes. Does that sound right? That was your testimony Somewhere today? Somewhere around there. And ma'am, we've also heard testimony that uh, you were on March 9th of 2019, I'm sorry, 2018, March 9th of 2018, that you were texting your friend Stephanie that you thought that Hannah had an aneurysm. Yes. And this would have been on 3 nine. Does that sound right? Yes. <coughs> And you said that was, besides Jason and Stephanie, that was the only conversation that you had regarding any, with anybody regarding aneurysm. I think Christina had sent me a text that said, sounds like an aneurysm or something like All that. Right. So on 3-8 of 2018, Christina would have sent you a text saying that she thought it sounded like an aneurysm? <coughs> I think so, yes, from what I've went back and looked at. And you would have received this text message around 8.30 a.m., probably while you were still at Fort Hamilton Hospital? Yes. After receiving this text message, you went in and then spoke to detectives on 3-8, is that right? I don't know the timing, but I spoke to detectives at Fort Hamilton, yes. Fair to say that the timeline would have been you went to Fort Hamilton Hospital, you spoke with detectives before going to Children's Hospital, does that sound right? Yes. While you were meeting with detectives Whitlock and Lambert and Sprague, at that point they told you that Hannah had been beat, is that right? Yes. And they told you that there was swelling on her brain from a beating? Yes. And at that time that she had retinal damage from a beating? Yes. And I think that Sergeant Whitlock described her eyeballs as going yes, And they indicate that was all from a beating? Yes. And ma'am, I know this is a sensitive subject, but approximately early to mid-February, you had a miscarriage. I did. And this would have been your second miscarriage, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you went to the doctor on February 9th of 2018, and they couldn't find a heartbeat at that time? Yes. And I think you said in your interview that you were just waiting to pass it. That was how that, that process was going to go? Yes. 
safe to say that you were going through a pretty rough time at that point? I think any woman would be. And you, you, you feel like you fit in that mold then of going through a hard time? Yes, it's sad. Your husband, TJ, he wasn't being extremely supportive, though, was he? Um, he was. He said, we'll try again. Um, but I tried not to talk about it too much. I mean, those are kind of intimate women things. Do you feel yeah, like he was pretty compassionate? Yeah. Yes. Permission to approach? You may. States Exhibit 158. I'm drawing your attention to a text message that you would have sent on 2-11-2018 at 7.39 a.m. Can you please read that portion aloud? I have a there you go. dead baby in my belly and there's nothing I can do about it. My husband hates me and has no compassion. Wish I could just off myself, all the pain would go away. And I think there's been ample testimony that during your interview with Detective Turner and Detective Hensley, it's your position today or your testimony today that you felt like you needed to tell them what they wanted to hear. Yes. Is that right? But ma'am, you didn't tell them what they wanted to hear on 3-8, did you? I didn't feel forced or pressured to do that. Despite them telling you that me. Hannah died. I'd, let, I'd ask her to let her finish the answer. She was finishing her answer. Finish the answer and then we'll proceed to the next question. Sorry. I felt like they were listening to me on Thursday. Despite them lying to you and saying that Hannah died. Yes. And so you didn't tell them what they wanted to hear on 3 8. They weren't badgering me the way I felt that it was on Friday. It was a different atmosphere. Ma'am, I understand you want to explain your answer and you can do so with your attorney, but I just want to know did you tell them what they wanted to hear on 3 8 of 18? No. And you were allowed to leave that day, is that right? Yes, ma'am. You went home. Yes. You were with your kids. Yes. With your husband. Well, I went to the hospital, so I wasn't at home with my kids, but... But you were free to go? Yes. You had your phone on you? Yes. And I think at that point you had talked to TJ as well, because he was interviewed, is that right? Yes. And he told you that his interview was brief. Yes. And that he didn't know anything because he wasn't even there. Is that right? Yes. And you go back to the sheriff's office on 3 9 at 18. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And you met with Detective Turner and Detective Pensley. Yes. And at that time, they, were, they had pictures of Hannah at this time. Yes. And they were going through those pictures with you and the different bruises. Is that right? Yes. And I think at the time they... They gave you some coffee. I think you commented that they give you flavored creamer. Yeah. Right. And yes. if you had to use the restroom, they let you use the restroom. Yes. And according to you, it's only at that time that you told them what they wanted to hear. Is that your testimony today? About an hour into it. 45 minutes. So you said about, okay, about an hour into it, you felt obligated to tell them what they wanted to hear. And in fact, not only did you tell them what they wanted to hear, you gave... You gave a description of exactly what you did, right? You went into detail. Didn't you, Miss Parton? They went into detail. Did they suggest the ketchup? Or did you suggest the ketchup? They asked if there was something else or that she got in trouble for, from oh. what I remember. So you just you just made that up? This whole ketchup thing you just made up off the top of your head? Yes, ma'am. So they you wanted to tell them what they wanted to hear, but they never even brought up anything about ketchup. They didn't say to you, did Hannah dump ketchup in the toilet? Did they? They didn't, no. So you're not just telling them what you're here. You're giving them detailed descriptions they of what you did. wanted to hear something else. The day before, Sergeant Whitlock wanted you to admit that you called 911 at 820, and you didn't do that, did you? 
it, it took me a minute to realize what he was saying. But, but man, you didn't admit to doing that, did you? No, because I knew exactly how long it had been that I was with Hannah. And Ma'am, we've already been, been through this, but you've, you've obviously been present and listened to all the testimony. Yes, ma'am. And you've met with your attorneys prior to this trial. Is that fair? Yes. A couple times? Yes. Maybe more than a couple? Maybe more than a couple. And you've indicated that you've watched your interview? Yes. Both interviews? Yes. How many times approximately have you done that? Um, once when they gave me the disc, um, and then once here. How many times have you read the transcript of your interview? Twice. And when you met with your attorneys, you went through all the evidence in the case Objection that the state what, had? What, what went on between the attorneys? Unless there's an argument, somehow this is not subject to attorney-client privilege, I'm going to sustain the objection. All right. Disregard the question, ladies and gentlemen. After looking through discovery, listening to testimony of witnesses, watching your interview multiple times, reading the transcript multiple times, the story that you've now come up with today is that you never heard Hannah. That's not a story, that's the truth. So you're saying that in, on 3 9, the statements that you made, you made it all up because you wanted to protect everyone. Is that your statement today? I don't know that I made it all up. I was letting them lead me into questions and giving them the answers according to what they wanted. Um, so your testimony today is that you just agreed with whatever they said. Is that right? That's what they wanted. They kept telling me something else happened. Something else happened. Somebody in that house did something. Did they ever tell you that she fell on the concrete step? They said, is it an accidental fall? But did they ever tell you, did they ever lead you that she fell on a concrete step? No, but did we were they walking ever, in the house. Did they ever lead you and tell you that she fell on a concrete step and hit her eye? No. Did they ever lead you to say that you picked her up and slipped on her blanket and dropped her? No, but they asked, they said, was it an accidental drop or an accidental fall? But ma'am, what I'm asking you is you're saying that they led you to what you want, what they wanted you to say. But my question is, did they specifically give you those details? Did they give you the detail about the ketchup? Well, no. Did they give you the detail about the concrete step? No. Did they give you the detail about the metal part on the concrete step? No. You indicated that your testimony today is that you told them what they wanted to hear because you wanted to protect everyone. Is that right? I did. And one of those people was TJ? Yes. And I think in your interview, your first interview, you said that TJ and you have a good relationship. Is that right? Yeah, to me it's good. I mean, it's good. Not everything's perfect, but... But that's how you described it. We have a good relationship. Yeah. And you said you were together for about five years at that point? Yes. He's the father of your babies. Yes, ma'am. And I think we've discussed this already, but he's baby daddy in your phone. Yes. All right. At some point, he used to be husband in your phone. Yes. All right. When did that change? Um, when he got a new phone number. October 2017, sound right? Yes. <coughs> so either he or his dad... Jay. Hired Jason? I think Jay did. I'm not really sure. And then at some point we've determined in July Jason moves in next door. Yes. Right. And I think Jason and you were friends. I think you said that in your interview. Um, and you said sometimes when he would come to pick Hannah up at the end of the night he would he would stay and you would kind of chat. Yeah, we would chat. And, but this bothered TJ, didn't it? When he would do that. I think a little bit. He's got a little jealous, maybe? maybe a little bit. You indicated that in your first interview that you and TJ bicker about normal stuff. Kids and I think you said money. Normal stuff. Is that fair? Fair. Um, any other things that any other married couple or, I'm sorry, had a wedding but any other didn't, couple. Get, didn't get a marriage license any <coughs> yes. would have. Okay. And you would also fight about his family, the Smiths, a lot. Yeah. You felt like he always sided with, with his family over you. They're a big family. But do you feel? But you felt that way. You felt like he was always kind of siding with them. Yes. And you would fight about his drinking. Yes. And you would fight that he was being unfaithful. Yeah, 
I don't know that he was, but I. But that was a topic of some of your fights. Yes. And you said that you felt bullied by police. Yes. But your husband bullies you all the time, doesn't he? Oh, I think it was your your statement in your first interview that you watched the kids all by yourself. Is that right? At home, yes. It's just you. TJ's not there. He's Everyone's working. Smile. We'll come in and out. But. TJ works for Smith Corp. Corp. Yes. Cor oh, it's pronounced Corp. Yes, okay. Sorry. It's his dad's company. Yes. Family business. Yes. He works long hours. Yes. It looks like on the day of. March 8th, he left about 6.15. Is that a pretty reasonable start date for him? Start time, yes. And when does he, yes, thank you, start time. And typically he gets home pretty late. Is that fair? Around the same time, Jason would pick up Hannah. They're on similar schedules. They work for the same company. Okay. And I think you testified on direct that he's not home a lot. You wish he could be home a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. And you said that he doesn't make a lot of time for you. No, he doesn't have a lot of time. And I think you've already alluded to this, but TJ drinks. Yes. And sometimes he would hit a bar after work and leave you home. Yes. And sometimes you would catch him drinking in the garage with his buddies instead of paying attention to you. Yes. And this actually happened the evening of March 6th of 2018. Yes. And you and TJ were fighting about that. Over text message, yes. Because he's off drinking and you're home with the kids. Yes. And I think there's been some testimony about this, but you were fighting with TJ, amongst other things that we've already discussed, on March 6th. Is that right? Over text message? Yes. Was it always over text message or did it ever be in front of the kids? Um, I'm sure there were some in front of the kids. We tried not to. Permission to approach? You may. Ma'am, isn't it true that on 3-6 of 2018 at 8.29 p.m. you told TJ good luck ever seeing the girls when all is gone because you work too much and pick everyone else and we aren't waiting for you anymore? I didn't even know people were in the garage, of course, but I don't matter. F-U-C-K, the shop moving, your people are unbelievable, can't even trust you to behave in front of me at a banquet, let alone off at a shop done by a piece of S-H-I-T bar, I'm sure I'll find you in. Is that right? Object to relevance, object to the character. Approach. that you were having looking at States Exhibit 158. I'll see if I can actually zoom out. But you were having conversations back and forth with TJ the week of March 5th. Is that fair? Yes. All right. And on March 6th, you had conversations with him via text message? That was not, yes. And at the bottom of the page, March 6, March 6, 2018, at 8.29 p.m., that's the text message that I just read out loud? Yes. And then you continue to fight with TJ on March 6. Sorry, I'm actually going to take this out of the book. On page 5.30 from Ms. Howard.
You continue to fight with him throughout the night? Is that fair? Yes. And on 3-6, 2018 at 8.30 p.m., you say you will always pick hanging out and drinking with whoever over us. The only reason you got to see Vivian is because I let you out, let her out there. Otherwise, you wouldn't pick them, and then you turn her against me by being a fake or instead of telling her the truth. Is that right? Yes. And then later in the night, in that text message around 9.41 on the same date, we, are no lo we no longer have a relationship. Have fun at your new shop. We will see you when you make time for us wherever we are. Is that right? I've said that before, but yes. And then three minutes later, you tell him we're done, go work and manipulate, is that right? Yes. And that's on 3 6, is that right, ma'am? Yes. And you continue fighting with TJ on 3 7, do you not? I believe so, yes. Page 532. 3-7, 2018 at 6.52 a.m. You tell TJ it's all about you and you know everything. So I think sick of it. Is that right? Yes. You tell him... About a half hour later, have a good day worrying about your employees and Smiths, only people who matter? Yes. So you would have been sending these text messages while you're watching <coughs> the children, is that right? Um, Hannah would have been there, KK wouldn't have been there. And my two kids would have been up. And it continues on throughout that morning, 727? Yes. You're always sorry and blah, blah, nothing changes. If you really cared and really sorry, you would stop drinking and pick us. No reason to be drinking in the garage last night. Ridiculous. Is that what you said? Yes. And then it continues on into noon, 1229 p.m. on that same day. The simple fact is we will never make it. With the shop being moved, I'm not sitting here waiting for you any longer. Seriously, over it's selfish, all of you. Is that right? Yes. And it looks like you continue to fight at 8.21 p.m. on 3-7 with TJ, LOL, when you neglected them for years at the bar. Get out of here. You no longer have control over me and the way I feel. We're going to bed. It's after 8. Sorry you work late every night. Is that what you said? Yes. And the last text message that you would have sent to him would have been at 8.21 p.m. on 3-7 where you said delusional. Is that right? Yes. Your testimony today that you were trying to protect everyone and you included Jason in that mix. Yes, ma'am. And Jason paid you $30, $35 a day, is that right? Yes. All right, and he was behind on paying you. That was normal. So that was normal. He was normally yeah. late on paying you. Yeah, which was fine. I think it, that was even in my text messages. I'd rather you pay rent and do stuff for your girls than pay me. And he would send you to, he would send Hannah to your house in dirty clothes sometimes. Every once in a while. Sometimes she was dirty and needed a bath. More towards the, more in the summer. And Jason, who made you get up an hour earlier than you had to. Didn't bother me. But it's your testimony today, ma'am, that on 3 9, that you were willing to lose everything your girls, your freedom, all to protect a deadbeat dad like Jason? That's your testimony I today. didn't think he was a deadbeat dad. We were friends. That's not my question, though. You were willing to yeah, lose everything. No, I wasn't. I never thought I would be in trouble. So it's your testimony today that you admitted to hurting Hannah, and you didn't think you would be in trouble. No, I didn't. I was under the assumption that he would back me up. So it was your thought process on 3-9 of 2018 
that you could admit to poking Hannah in the chest and you would be in trouble. Yes. And that you could admit to squeezing her and her middle and you would be in trouble. That's yes. your testimony. Yes. And that you could admit to hitting her with a closed fist multiple times under the chin and you wouldn't be in trouble. Yes. And that you could admit to shaking her until she lost consciousness and you wouldn't be in trouble. Jack, that's a mischaracterization no of that approach, statement. Approach, approach. Ladies and gentlemen, my last question is the uh, court has sustained an objection to you to disregard that question. Ms. Sheehan, if you'd like to rephrase. Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, it's your testimony that on 3-9 of 2018 that you didn't know that admitting to shaking Hannah would get you in trouble. No, I didn't think it would. It's your testimony that on 3-9 of 2018 that you didn't know that shaking Hannah and that you didn't even know if she lost consciousness wouldn't get you in trouble. No, I didn't think so. You showed a bruise on your hand to Detective Hensley, did you not? I did. You claimed that when you fell with Hannah, you had a bruise. Yes. But it's your testimony today that that never happened. Why would you show them your hand? It seemed logical. The time? Well, walk me through that logic, Miss Parton, because you said after about an hour, you stopped telling the truth, right? Yes. So what was the last truthful statement you said? I don't remember. The so at that point, ma'am, you are now telling the detectives what they want to hear. That's yes. been your testimony. Yes. And one of the things that you told the detectives was that while you were carrying Hannah, you tripped and fell. Is that right? Yes. And when you tripped and fell, and I think you made some comment that you tripped over her blanket or your robe. Is that right? Yes. <coughs> Those weren't details supplied by Detective Turner, right? No. He didn't ask you if you tripped over a blanket, right? No. He didn't ask you if you tripped over a robe. No. So you, your testimony, your statement to Detective Turner was that you tripped and fell while carrying Hannah and she smacked her face on that concrete step. Is that right? Yes. And you said, in fact, I injured my hand trying to catch myself. I managed to catch my weight, but I injured my hand. And then you showed Detective Hensley your hand to show him the bruise that you had on your hand. Yes. But you were just making all that up. Making it up? You never fell with Hannah. No. You never carried Hannah. No. You never fell and had to grab your weight, right? No. You never had a bruise on your hand? There was a little one there, but it wasn't from that. Okay, so you were showing Detective Hensley a bruise on your hand from something else? Earlier in the week, I was in the barn feeding the dog. So you yeah. told Detective Hensley. Finish. She needs to be able to finish her answers. Go ahead and finish your she answer. I was in the barn. So you injured your hand in the shed. barn, shed. And then you told Detective Hensley, look, this is the bruise that I have from, yeah. from falling when I was holding Hannah. I did. You indicated that it was your belief you could physically discipline Hannah. Yes. Was it your belief, or did you think, Miss Parton, that you could poke her chest? I don't know of. Ms. Parton, did you think that, that you could slap her across the face? I have known other moms to do that. That's not so what I'm I asking. So I didn't think that it was an issue as a type of discipline? That wasn't my question. My question was, it was your belief that you could physically discipline Hannah. Was it your belief that you could slap her across the face to discipline her? Ask an answer. It wasn't answered yet. Okay. Yes. Was it, did you think then, was it your belief that you could squeeze her middle? Ask me, you've already went through this one time. I know we went through this, about the squeezing. Well, let's approach. Ms. Sheena, if you repeat the question. Yes. Ma'am, was it your belief that you could squeeze her middle? 
Yes. Was it your belief that you could hit her on the face with an open hand? Yes. And was it your belief that you could hit her on the chin with a closed fist? Yes. And it was it your belief that you could shake her? Yes. And no further questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 2.33. I know we've only been going out for about an hour and a half. You probably have another 15 to 30 minutes in you, but uh, the redirect, I, I really don't like interrupting the flow of when, when the attorneys are doing what they're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take your 15-minute uh, uh, bathroom break. Just leave your notepads and remember your sure. admonitions. We'll be back at uh, 2.45 outside. We'll come get you a little um, do the uh, redirect at that point. And this part, please remember, you're also under admonition to discuss your testimony of the case, and you are still under. Okay? Yes, Thank you, Judge. Sir.